Welcome back to Nuclear Bunker Living. On today's episode, we're taking a step back into the launcher communication rooms as we uncover more equipment and make way on more demolition. they built a giant, and they gave it the name of a giant in Greek mythology, Titan. Part of the complex, 20 feet underground, is the control center of the command guidance system. The operations room houses most of the radar equipment and the entire guidance computer. The ground guidance equipment is maintained in a targeted condition. All the materials required for inserting nine targets into the computer are supplied in a single targeting package. The console labels are placed on the launch control console to identify the target stored in the computer. The missile combat crew commander can then set each launcher switch at the target designated by Strategic Air Command. Each target is then verified. For each target, target package identification and target designation numbers are printed out. These should correspond exactly to values supplied in the target kit folder. At any time, new targets may be substituted by selecting a target kit from the tape library reading the new target tape into the computer and substituting new re-entry vehicle cards and identification labels. Welcome back to Nuclear Bunker Living. Exit here. Today, we're taking a step back into the launch communication center of the control dome, as seen on the declassified video you just watched. Now, you may have noticed this specific room before when we interviewed Thomas Baker about the horrific accident that involved his father in the construction of a nearby Titan I complex. Now, when we first started shooting this docuseries, these were some of the first pieces of equipment filmed in the communication equipment room about two years ago. The control dome was specifically hardened being that the brains of this whole complex were stationed within this dome. So Pat and crew have been working a lot of this past year on getting the lower levels of the control dome cleaned up and ready for renovations. As we finalize all metal removal and clean up operations, we are turning towards a communication equipment room which has been virtually untouched past the tile floors being removed. So on today's episode, we are tackling this room and disassembling all of the remaining equipment to be put in our Titan One Museum. Now that Pat has deconstructed most of the structure in the communications room of the control dome, we can now see a lot more of the equipment that was luckily left inside of our Titan One complex. The description of this room goes as follows. On the other side of the upper level of the control center was a communications equipment room that contained the phone, alarm, intercom, and other communication systems equipment used in the Titan One. Stromberg Carlson, Bell & Howell, AT&T, Western Electric Company, and a host of other telecommunications companies' systems were installed to make this site functional. As the Titans were so large in scale, they required a very complex communication system and were outfitted with systems similar to what a college campus might have had in 1960. Now by freeing up a lot of this equipment is our duty to put all this stuff within the Titan Museum that we have on site.
Now that most of the communication equipment is removed from the wall, Pat now can go in and remove the wall that separates the two rooms in the upper levels of the control dome. Now Pat is absolutely proficient when it comes down to removing these walls. All the walls in the lower parts of the control dome, Pat removed last year to give us a full 360 view of that level. He uses the same technique now on all of these walls in the control domes that are remaining. But that still doesn't negate the fact that these walls were absolutely made to take a nuclear blast from above. So in short, these walls are almost indestructible and it takes a lot of hard effort to remove them and get them down. Yep, I see that. So now that Pat's removed a couple of these panels within this wall, it gives a glimpse of what it's gonna look like when this is fully 360 up on top. There you go. Yeah. Now I can use this one on that one. Bag of goodies right here. Oh yeah, look at this Hey, they care about us. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that, yeah, there's, there's stuff over on the other side. One more, one more. Lower, yep. Yep. 
So, after a heavy week of work, now it's time to cleaning up and getting ready for the week ahead of us. There's absolutely plenty of more work to do in the control dome, but we are nearing the ending stages of demolition that has lasted a full year, and finally, we can begin renovations very, very soon. It feels amazing to start off this new year strong and get some work done at the base. This is Exit signing out this week, and as always, thank you so much for watching Nuclear Bunker Living.